Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to create a tubular shape that inflates and deflates by segments. To achieve this, we'll use a noise along with a pattern, which will be assigned to the scale of each of the circles that form this biomechanical worm. Finally, we'll use an extrude to create these metallic scales that can be pointy or more subtle. Let's move forward. Let's begin by reviewing this tutorial part by part. Chapter 1, Overview. The first part focuses only on modeling a curved line that will act as the spine of our biomechanical worm. Here, we're basically using a single point to which we'll apply a noise and then a trail to trace a curved line that can always be in motion or generate different variations. After that, the pattern and noise are combined using a math mix to create what we'll see in the next section, a worm-like form whose body inflates or deflates depending on the noise parameters. We'll see this in the second section, where we use a copy to create circles around the vertebrae, or the line that gives shape to this synthetic creature. We'll use a skin to create vertices and primitives, followed by an extrude applied to each primitive, resulting in these scale-like forms. To soften each primitive's extrude, we apply a subdivide and a normal to recalculate normals. To get the points, I simply used a select below, where I brought in the result of the subdivide. Then, using a convert with the option points to point primitives, I now have only the points without needing a copy or instancing. To finish, I'll make a simple render, which we won't cover in this tutorial. However, if you'd like to explore in depth, you can also find the project file on my Patreon. Without further ado, let's move to the next part. I have two geo components. The first one has its respective PBR material, since we're using an environment light with an HDRI image. For the points, I simply used a constant with green color. The rest I reinforced with a bit of extra lighting. For the post-processing, I used a Luma Blur to give more depth to the composition. Without further ado, let's move to the next part. A quick pause. If we haven't met yet, I'm Okami Rufu, and my life's purpose is to create, inspire, and educate through my work as a creative technologist focused on touch designer. I'm jumping in just for a moment to let you know that I've built a growing community on school, where you'll find beginner and intermediate courses, exclusive tutorials, and a library of downloadable project files including special bundles you won't find anywhere else. But more than that, it's an active, thriving space. For example, in one of the exclusive tutorials I uploaded recently, there are already tons of people interacting, sharing project files, asking questions, and helping each other. It goes far beyond a traditional academic setting. I've put a lot of energy into making it practical, efficient, and fun. And the best part? This space is slowly integrating all the value I've already built on Patreon, all in one place for the same price. I truly hope to see you there, sharing knowledge, experimenting together, and asking the questions that help us all grow. I'll leave all the links in the description. Chapter 2. Network. To start, let's create a point. Remember, we're going to work almost exclusively with the pop operator family. Next, we connect a noise and raise the period to 2. As always, we're going to animate the noise using absolute time.seconds divided by 10. This way we've made the point move randomly through space. Now we connect a trail, change trail length to frames, and set it to 200 frames. Leave the other attributes as they are. Then connect align metrics and enable tangents. We'll use these later to correctly orient the circle that gives body to this synthetic worm. Perfect. Now comes the interesting part of this network, where we'll use a pattern and a noise to create these undulating bodies. Do the following. First, connect a pattern to the line metrics. Change the parameter size to 1.0. Select the type ease and ease out. Set map to low to 0 0.5. Finally, rename the output attribute scope with a new name. I've named it pattern. Now below, create a noise. Connect the line metrics to the noise. Try setting the period to a low value. 0 0.07 works well for me and increase amplitude to 1.0.
Here you have a wide range to try new things. Also, apply animation to the noise, especially in the rotate X axis, where we'll use absolute time dot seconds. Use the same expression in the Translate 3D, but divide it by 15. Perfect. Now in the output, go to Combine Attribute Scope and select Noise. Finally, rename the resulting attribute from this noise. You can call it Deformation. Very good. If you want to dive deeper into these concepts and understand how they truly work, I recommend joining my school community where we host study groups focused on going beyond the techniques and exploring the ideas behind them. Now let's create a math mix and connect the last two operators. In the math mix, set the operation to multiply. So we'll use A multiplied by B. In scope A, select the pattern, which is the first attribute we created in the pattern pop. In scope B, use input one in one deformation, which corresponds to the values we created with the noise. We can assign this result a new attribute or variable. I've called it radial scale. Perfect. Now create a circle and lower the uniform scale to 0.01. Feel free to test other values. You can leave the divisions at 40 for now, but depending on your graphics card, you can play with this number more. Now connect a copy after the circle and connect the math mix to the second input of the copy. As you can see, we already have all the circles cloned and they follow the movement of the line created by the trail. Now what's left is to apply the calculation we made between the pattern and the noise. To do this, go to the template tab, activate template scale, and look for the attribute named radial scale. Finally, enable template rotate to vector and select the plus Z coordinate and the tan attribute, period. which we previously created in the line metrics. Perfect. With this, we have the expected result. This worm that expands and compresses in sections and is constantly moving. Let's go to the next part. First, connect a skin, followed by an extrude. For the extrude, use very small values in distance. 0.003 works for me. Set the inset to negative one. The extrude on primitives is pretty rough, so we can soften it using a subdivide set it to two. Be careful using values above two or near four, as this can consume a lot of GPU resources. To finish, connect a normal and now we can see the first interesting result. This worm now has a very biomechanical or synthetic skin. Call it whatever you like, but it's fascinating. Here, you can play a lot with the extrude to try different results. Now, before connecting to the geo component, I'll add a transform and scale it up to 20. All that's left is to reposition the camera. While I recommend using a camera type that follows the object, for now I'll just disable the trail and keep a single curve. Perfect. Now I adjust the camera to see the worm, which, as you can see, has tons of detail. The final result will depend on how you render it. To wrap up this tutorial, there's one last detail to render just the points. This is super simple. First, create a select period. Drag this subdivide into the select, and then create a convert. Select the option points to point primitives, connect a new transform, and set the uniform scale to 20. Perfect. We now have these points, which also add depth to the composition. From here, it's up to you to use the project as you like and find other ways to compose with these objects. For example, 
I tried shifting the points from their original position to create another layer. Remember that the initial noise gives you tons of range to modulate the result, so make the most of it. If you want to dive much deeper and join nearly 3,000 people already on my Patreon, you'll get access to free VJ packs, all the project files from my YouTube tutorials, exclusive components and plugins, and a fully organized shop with conceptual VJ packs, more advanced plugins, and much more. Everything is perfectly arranged in collections, so you can easily browse and find exactly what you need. And if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine too. You can buy individual project files anytime, no strings attached. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.